Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Live Loops. We use Live Loops to play or launch musical ideas in real time in a grid of cells, and they each contain either a region or a loop, and we can start and stop the cells freely, all while keeping everything in sync with Logic's timeline. Now, it's a completely different workspace, and we're looking at the Live Loops grid right now, but we can also view the tracks area when we click on this icon up here. So now we're seeing both side by side, and there's a divider line where you can resize. So we can just view the traditional tracks area like we're used to, or both of them, or just the Live Loops grid. So in this video, I just want to give you an overview, the big picture idea of how this works, and then we'll dive in deeper in the videos that are coming up. Now, the live loops grid that we're looking at here consists of cells, and these cells contain either audio regions or software instrument regions or drummer regions, and they're usually looped. And like in the tracks area, the cells can only reside on tracks of the same type. For example, audio tracks are going to contain audio loops drummer tracks, drummer loops, software instrument tracks, instrument loops, etc. And when I say loops, I mean regions that are usually looped. Now we can add content to the grid in several ways. We can drag regions from the tracks area directly into a cell. So just drag and drop when you're viewing both side by side like that. We can drag a loop from the loop browser into a cell. We can drag a file from the finder, and we can even record directly into the cells themselves. So when we position our mouse directly over a cell, we're going to see a play button, and it'll toggle to a stop button once we engage playback. And we can play multiple cells simultaneously on different tracks. So right now I've got these three playing. And if I hit the space bar to stop playback, we'll see it stop, but these cells are still flashing. And that indicates that they're in queue and they'll restart next time I hit play. I hit stop and they're still flashing. Now we can click the grid stop button at the bottom right here to stop all playing cells and remove all the blinking cells from the queue. Now let me get a couple more playing. All right, I'm gonna hit stop. So I've got these three blinking. And as you know, we can click this to take them out of the queue, but we can also right click in the cell to dequeue a cell. And I'll dequeue all of those to take them out of the queue. And ones that aren't in the queue, we can right click and add to the queue. So there's lots of ways of managing this, which we'll get into. Now, columns of cells are organized into what we call scenes. And we see these scene trigger buttons at the bottom. So they're gonna play everything in this column. And there I hit stop and the playback button there. And they all have slightly different variations, of course. And you can see that the scenes are cued as well to start and stop and sync. So we can play back individual cells or scenes, which are collections of cells organized into these vertical columns. And you'll see this whole scene is flashing now because they're all in queue. And I can just click that to stop and take them out of queue. Now, the Live Loops grid also has a cell inspector to control many parameters for each of the cells, like quantizing the playback and transposing the length, the speed of the playback. I'm going to hit I to open the inspector. Let me just select one of the cells. And you can see here is different play modes. We can determine where and when it's going to start and stop playing. Loop points, length, can transpose it follow tempo, play back at different speeds, and so on. And the idea is that once you've got some ideas together that you want to capture, we can record our live loops performances to the tracks area. And we'll get doing that later in the videos. And there's a lot of fun involved with this, of course, when you're using a hardware controller to start and stop the different cells and scenes so you can control it from a tactile surface. And Logic ships with a variety of template starter grids to get you started. And this is one of the ones that we're looking at right now. And there's even a tutorial section for live loops as well to get you started. So welcome to a whole new area of logic. We'll continue with more in the next video.